Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Monday to you. Live from uh, beautiful Studentville in San Luis Obispo, North Choro. Been looking at the discussion groups and what's been going on out there. See some questions that have been uh, creeping up across all the sections. I thought I'd uh, go ahead, especially for the benefit of the Monday group, who uh, is not going to get any narrative this week, to uh, cover some material that will help answer these questions. And also will help, well, I guess it's next week, isn't it? So depending upon how lucky you get as to which test you draw, uh, there'll be some information here that'll be very helpful that you need to learn anyway. But So there's, there's three areas I want to cover. The first one you should already be seeing on my share screen. And this has to do with the presentation of the graphs in the open and short stub together. You can see the schematic here. This really isn't all that tricky, but th this, this part of the problem evolves from looking at this graph and saying, really all I did was short it and I moved my notch from here to here. And we have a bandpass characteristic on the blue curve, which is the shorted stub. We have a bandpass characteristic on the red curve, which is the uh, open stub. Some of you had a little difficulty and, and maybe some of you never did get it figured out uh, how to get both these curves on here. So if you double click in an open section of the graph and you get to the uh, options for it, you find out what you need to do to get those in there is you go to the data sets and equations, you would select open stub and then you would click on S11 and you can, or in this case I was doing S21. So let's, let's stay with that S21. And here it puts it over here as S21 from open stub set. Then I can select shorted stub and I get an S21 from the shorted stub set. So now I have two data sets that will be displayed on the same graph. And when I hit OK, I get this. Now, that kind of made me do a little bit of thinking as to, well, can I improve on the bandwidth of the bandpass? When you did your bandwidth measurements, and I'm going to talk about the bandwidth measurements in a minute, but I just want to plant a thought with you here. These notches were, oh, half a meg to one meg wide. These passes were a couple hundred megahertz wide. And the question is, can I get a narrower band pass response using these stubs? Well, then I got to looking at this and going, well, look, I got this shorted stub right here. No, sorry, this is the open one. I have a notch here, and then I've got another notch a quarter wave frequency away. What if I were to lengthen this stub and thus move that frequency closer? Do I not end up with a more narrow bandpass? Hmm. That might be something you want to experiment with in the next week as you uh, are doing some uh, preparation for the lab final. When you do combine these into one plot, you get a graph that looks like this. And these are these lambda over four frequencies. This is quarter wave, half wave, three lambda over four, and one lambda. And you can see we, we do get a composite response here that is fairly narrow, fairly deep skirts, 40 dB plus. And the idea would be, can you narrow this gap and make this pass characteristic more narrow? So I will leave that to you and your research to consider. Now I promised we would talk some about measuring bandwidth. So let's do that. Let me change to my S21 graph. Okay, I have to do it this way.
So here's the S21 graph. Now I had seen comments where some of you had actually exported the data into a CSV. Some of you maybe had discovered the data table function in the data display. There's even an easier way. If you click in the white area in one of these markers such that the box highlights in red and you use the right and left cursor arrow keys, you end up changing the frequency. And as you can see, you're also looking at the various data points. So here at the depth of the notch, we're at minus 41.5. Our 3 dB point then is going to be at minus 38.5 on either side of this. So if I go down in frequency, notice I jump from 39 to 36. So I can't really get my 3 dB point easily there. And the same way, eh, you know, 41, 38, yeah, that one works okay. So you could say, well, all right, so 216.8, 216.3, that's half a megahertz. So I've got approximately one megahertz wide. That would be okay. But there is a way that you can also zero on this with more, zero in on this with more resolution. If you go to your parameters, and instead of a thousand points, tell it to uh, simulate 10,000 points. First of all, this only costs you a couple of tenths of seconds. It really doesn't take all that long. So we rerun the simulation and off the screen, you can't see this, but it says, okay, it took me 2.4 seconds to do this. But now watch what happens over here with my marker. Remember, I'm looking for 38.5. I'm gonna hit the uh, left arrow and you can see, first of all, I went a little deeper. My notch is actually minus 41.63. So now we're looking at 38.63 for our 3 dB point. So 38, it's gonna be right around there. We, we couldn't even get this close, 215.6. and 216.8, so we're about 1.2 megahertz wide. Got a little better interpretation of what this is doing. So we just, no real export of data here. We just made sure that we had enough data points that we could get the kind of resolution we wanted in order to make these measurements. And this is a lot easier than exporting the data to CSV and having to open it to Excel and all those sorts of things. So wanted to show that to you. This makes getting those measurements a lot easier. Uh, also worth commenting here, oh, well, instead of just doing that, let's change to M6. So we are at minus 0.379. And we want to get to the smallest number we can get. And it looks like seven eighths about as low as we can get. So we're looking for minus 3.378. And as you can tell, this takes a while with all those extra points. So let's just drag this down with the cursor. 3.3-ish. 3.377. So that was 279.5. Go the other way. Oops, I went too far. So right about there, 5.83, 583.6. Five, you can do the math. It's at least 200 megahertz wide. 290, almost 300. 
So fairly wide across the top of that bandwidth. Okay, so that, that's the ease with which those measurements can be done. Just wanted to point that out to you. 